keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of what? Peace. When you unify, you bring peace. You don't understand the devil just keeps you angry like that because he knows if y'all unify and come into an agreement, it's going to cause love to come out of you and bring peace. Amen. Boy, I couldn't hear a pin drop in there. Maybe some of you need to go and unify and bring peace in your relationships. Amen? That shows maturity as a Christian. Not you knowing the Bible. You acting out the Word of God through love. Love is the simplest thing in the Bible that He asks us to do, that we can't do. All this deep theological stuff, forget that. How about love it? Can you do that? The devil even loves his own. <laughs> Amen. All right. What was I going to say? Coming together doesn't mean you are in unity. If you are in the way, God can't move. If you're in the way, what do I mean by if you're in the way? If you're in the way, God can't move. How, how's God, how are you in the way? Because your pride stepped in. God does not go against your will. He allows you to choose who you will serve. <coughs> well, why did God do this? Why did God allow that? No. I need you to come to me because you want to. God wants to be loved, needed, and accepted. Ain't that the same thing we want? But when we do it, it's selfishness. When I want to be loved, needed, and accepted, that's selfishness. Self in need. What do those letters spell out, people? Self in need. Say it. Self in need. Take the three letters. Sin. Every time you're needy, every time you're in need, Self in need, sin. Selfish need. Because you want to be loved, needed, and accepted. But God says, no, love me, need me, and accept me, and watch me bless you. Amen. Amen. He's a jealous God. Amen. Right, I want to give you an example of that. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Y'all get anything out of this so far? Amen. Uh, 1 Samuel 15. We just want to look at that famous scripture that Saul did because Saul uh, kept getting in the way. Saul was commanded to go kill everything. He got an obedience from God. God said, you the people. Go over there to the uh, Amalekites. Kill everybody. Kill every man, woman, child, and beast. Don't bring nothing back. What did Saul do? He brought back all the best stuff. Amen. Amen. Starting at verse 21, what does it say? Ready? But the people took up the spoil, the sheep and oxen, and the chief things, which should have been utterly destroyed. See that? Everything, all that stuff should have been destroyed. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Has the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey, to obey is better than sacrifice. Listen, listen with an intent to change. Everybody listen, but are you changing? Are you listening to God's word and it's causing the change in you? Or are you just listening? And they're gonna, you know, come up with your own device on what you want to do. God knows yourself more than God. God says you're a God unto yourself and you want to remain the same. Amen. He expects you to change. How can you be a sinner then, and then don't change to the glory of God? Don't make sense. And say, I'm saved. And you haven't changed. Then guess what? You're a saved person going to hell. Mm -hmm. You can't say you're saved and stay in the same condition. Ain't nothing. God requires you to repent. God requires you to confess. God requires you to forgive. I ain't doing that. I ain't never did it before. What are you going to hell? I said, I'm passing. What going to hell? Look at verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Ain't that something? So witchcraft is not what you see on TV, hocus pocus, but look, 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 look. Rebellion is you being disobedient to God. Amen. And stubbornness is as what? Iniquity of idolatry. So every time you say, I ain't your you just set an idol. And guess who the idol is? You. You made yourself a God, lowercase g. And God said, you will have no other gods before me. Amen. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Amen. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because 
I feared the people and obeyed their voice. See, you ain't obeying God, you're obeying people. Amen. Until you get delivered from people, you will never have any <laughs> Amen? You hear me, brother? Until you get delivered from people, you'll never have a ministry. You know why? Because people are a ministry. But don't let people sway you away from what God wants you to do. Amen. Even Paul said to King Agrippa, Jesus sent me and delivered me from the people with the Gentiles. Because he can't have a ministry until he got delivered from people. You can't help people until people don't motivate you to do what God told you not to do. That's it, right? I hope so. But don't let people motivate you away from God. That's all I'm trying to say. Let, let have people motivate you to help them. Have God motivate you to help them. But if people are the only reason why you're serving God, you are wrong. Amen. Amen. Let's talk about somebody uh, who had their family in unity. Let's go to Genesis chapter 9. Noah was blessed and had unity in his family. Now, the reason why I'm going in this word, I want you to see somebody who was the most treacherous man, in my point of view, one of the most treacherous men in the Bible. And how he had people with negative agreement. Do you know negative agreement and positive agreement are both one and the same? They both have power. I give you an example of that. How many of you know the story of Ananias and Sapphira? Yeah. The one who lied to the Holy Ghost and dropped dead. Bam! Yeah. They were in negative agreement as a married couple. So negative agreement just has, has as much power. If I agree with you negatively, we got just as much power as if I agree with you positively. It's still power. Because the power is your tongue. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Amen. The tongue kills quicker than a pistol. It's bigger than a nuclear bomb. That's how powerful words are, man. Words that destroy countries, dude. Amen. A lot of people are in prison over words. Come on, think about it. But Noah had, Noah had unity in his family. Let's look at that. Genesis 9-1, what does it say? And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, what? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Look at that. Because you know how many people went on that boat? Eight. Eight. What does the number eight represent? Eight. New beginnings. <laughs> Those eight people were set up to start a new beginning. Amen. But watch this. Watch what happens here. Go to chapter 10 of Genesis. Because they had a son yes. named Nimrod. Yes. <laughs> Genesis 10. Anybody ever heard of Nimrod? Yes. 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 Amen. Look at verse 8. <laughs> and Cush begat Nimrod. Stop there. Cush begat Nimrod. Nimrod's name means rebellion. That's his name. When you say Nimrod, you're saying rebellion. And he was the first person that set up what? The tower of what? Babel. Babel means place of confusion. So all the wretched countries came out of there, like Nibia and all those places. Babylon, who is Iraq today. All those countries came out of there. Why? Because he had the people in unity, in agreement. But let's see how powerful he is. Look at verse 9. And he was a mighty hunter before the law. Does that mean he was hunting animals? You know who he was hunting? Men. Men. Actually, some background books say he was the prototype for Catholicism. If you're Catholic, I'm sorry. You know why? Because he had people worshiping his mother. He had statues built of himself. Hello, hello. He had people bowing down to him. Yeah, I know some people didn't like that. Amen. There's even some books that said he was sleeping with his mother. Negative agreement. But he was a mighty hunter of men. Amen. Uh, before the Lord. Wherefore it was said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Verse 7. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Iraq, and the Cal, and the Cal, Cal, whatever that name is, and the land of Shinar. Amen. And out of that land went forth Asher and built Nibia. See, God remember Nibia, that's where Jonah went. That was a wretched place to go for. Jonah said, I ain't going. He was trying to kill him. I ain't going. I ain't going. But the Lord said, a big fish swallowed him up and made him go. Amen. <laughs> and the city of Rehoboth and Kedekar. Amen. I want you to jump over to chapter 11. Now, let's look at what Nimrod did. Now, the Tower of Babel, Babel means confusion or a cause of separation. 
So anytime you're building a tower unto yourself, you are causing confusion. <laughs> but he had all the people who were worshiping him. Remember, we're going to see some things in here. Let's look at verse 1. Starting in verse 1. And the whole earth was a one language. See that? They were in agreement. The whole earth spoke one language. No matter what it was, they spoke. And it said, and of one speech. Now, I scratched my head and said, what does one language and one speech mean? That means they spoke the whole earth spoke the same language, but it was English. But guess what speech meant when I looked it up? Speech meant they also were in unity in spirit. Ooh. So they spoke the same language, hello, and they were all in the same spirit. Mm. Mm -hmm. So let's see what God comes down to do. This is one of the few times you'll see God get off his throne. God don't get off his throne all that often in the Bible, but this is one of the times he does. Amen. Verse 2. And it came to pass, and they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for martyr. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. See? They want to try to kill God. You know, they know this thing won't happen. Let's hurry and build this tower, go up there and kill God. You know what I mean? Before we get scattered. <laughs> but let's see what happens. Verse 5. And the Lord came down. Uh, the Lord got off his throne. Oh, hello. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower. Amen. Which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is what? One. They unify. Negatively, but they unify. And they have all one language. Mm -hmm. And this they began to do. And nothing, and nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Look at that, y'all. That's telling me if you are unified, ain't nothing will stop you from doing what you imagine to do. When you get unified, this ministry will get those buildings back there. If you get unified, there won't be nobody in here lacking anything. Amen. When you get unified, people will be able to come from far and wide and see, boy, it's just a house of God. Look at these people Amen. so powerful. They are unified. They are loving one another. They ain't even showing off. They just naturally unified. Can we get that? Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, well, let's see what happens. Let me go on. Because okay. I got a lot. Okay. Verse 7. Go to, let us. Go down, and there confound their language. Now God said, let me go down there and confuse them. Confound these confused. Their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. You see that? I would go down there and mess up their language. What did he do? He came down. Now we got German, Spanish, Chinese, English, yeah. you know, Portuguese, yeah. all these languages. Yeah. Then what did he say at the end of that? He said, also go down and do what? And, and, and that they may not understand one another's spirit. So when I switched up your language, now your spirit's ain't lined up. That's right. Mm. Mm. Hello. If I confuse your language, I confuse your speech. Woo, Jesus. Amen. So the Lord scattered them abroad from this upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build a city. Now they right had no more control. Amen. Amen. But that's a sign of negative, of negative agreement and negative unity. God wants us to kick out things that are stopping the unity. Amen. You must have the same attitude in unity. You must fight for unity. When you set yourself up in rebellion, <coughs> oh, here we go. When you set yourself up in rebellion, demons accommodate you. <laughs> when you set yourself up in rebellion, demons accommodate you. Amen. Let me prove it out. Let's look at this. I wrote down four things that disrupts unity, and we will come to a close short. God is really moving. Robert, I wanted to hear your question. Man, I got yeah. Amen. People who carry the spirit of battle or confusion are these. Number one, write these down. I have scriptures for every one of them. Number one are called tail bearers. And another word for tail bearers are gossiper and whisperers. You know, they can't come in. They go like this. Gossipers and tailbacks. Smiling in the face and stabbing you in the back. Amen. Number two, negative people. Now I wrote this 10 years ago. Eat the meat and spit out the bone. And if you did it, just 
Yes, you can. Oh. Amen. <laughs> Number two, negative people. So don't think I was thinking about you when I wrote this sermon. I had a schedule three weeks ago, a month ago. Amen. And I wrote this ten years ago. Used to preach it at the drug rehab. Amen. Now I'm preaching it here. <laughs> number three, rebellious people. And finally, number four, you know, I like this one. People who are in sexual sin. Those four things stop unity in a ministry and in a church. Amongst your family and amongst your friends. Amongst your co-workers, amongst your job. It stops unity. Amen? <coughs> so let's look at the first listing. Number one, tell bearers and gospels. Go to Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. We're going to try to shoot through these scriptures quickly. I got a lot concerning the other, other verses here. Leviticus 19, verse 16. Real quickly. If you can't keep up with me, just write it down over there. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. That sounds like God said it. Not woman. That is right. He made sure he ended the sentence. I am the Lord. <laughs> Proverbs 11. Proverbs really gets you in the tail with this book. Proverbs 11. Look at verse 13. A talebearer reveals secrets. Uh -huh. A talebearer reveals secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. A talebearer tells all your men. But if he's your friend, he will conceal your issue. Hello. Don't tell. Amen. Come on. Amen. Too many of y'all got tip friends that are tail bears. I cut them. I leave them to the side, baby. I love you, but you ain't walking with me no more. Because I talk too much, and I know I'm going to give you one of my secrets. The Bible says when you find people like that, there's a scripture I didn't write down that says, don't give your pearls unto the swine or unto the dog. They will spit them back at you. Those pearls represent your wisdom. They don't respect you. Oh, 
Amen. Amen. And that's what a tail bearer does to you. Goes to the most parts of the belly. Amen. And it hurts. That's why the prisons are full. <laughs>
Amen. Amen.